You ain't never seen a man turn leg go with his hands. You ain't never seen a man get a queen wet with a glance. What a turn, why whole wide world, mine in my mind. In and out of time, my light shine bright for the blind. Some by the way I do it. 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 So I'm gonna be a millionaire soon, but I already knew it. I'ma die the bullets fluid. All this winning therapeutic. Some by the way I do it. Some by the way I do it. They be trying to drain my energy up with the battery is not included. Women trying to be recruited. Let them do the thing I put it. What is cute that she fool it? Some by the way I do it. I remember playing ring around the rosy now. I got a pocket full of OZs, water dollars, wallet full of old cheese. Got a Glock, a cock and pop a police. Block a block a block a boom, shock a lock a bottle, shot him while he rock a rosary. Got your mama watching out the nose, please. Sloppy toppy while I'm trying to go sleep. Some but the way I do it, the ball out like a nude is hooping. Peace, family. Welcome to another episode of Underground Railroad Productions. Back once again with the living legend. None other than Professor Griff. Welcome back to the show, brother. Yeah, thanks, brother Rich. It's always a pleasure to be back, man. I think we uh we we missed a week, so yeah, there's a few things that we gotta catch up on. <laughs> yes, yeah. indeed. Yes, yes, yes. It was uh, good, man. B- well, before we get started, I I just did an interview with the brother uh Sarnetta and Brother Jabari, so I wanna shout out Sarnetta and he got the um Sarnetta T V awards coming up. Did you get your um you got nominated. Did you get your the thing in the mail yet? Your nomination no, in the no, mail no, yet? No, no, no. Oh, okay. No, no, no. Okay, well, it's definitely coming. Uh, he talked about it with my with, with me. And, um, yeah, be shout out to that brother July 7th. You can go to his YouTube channel, Black News 102, for more information. All the flyers uh-huh. should be up in the beginning of the video. So just wanted to say that. But besides that, Professor Griff, man, listen, man, a lot... This entertainment industry, man, this music industry, a music that you're familiar with, an industry that you have been criticized and called a hater for making certain statements about certain individuals. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's been an interesting year in Hollywood this year. Very interesting year. Wow. And um, there's this interview with Quincy Jones, brother, that he just, uh, I think it was with Vulture Magazine. Wow. And uh, Vulture, he said, Vulture, like, Vulture, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Yeah, he said some some wild things in that in that interview, man. From uh, sure. Marvin Gaye being having relations with uh, I think Marlon Brando, mm-hmm. Richard Pryor being bisexual, and a uh, lot you know Michael Jackson being a thief and being greedy and how he would steal. Right. Um, you know, just a lot of things, man. I I know you read it, Professor Griff. Uh, t- talk to me about it. Talk to me about it. Well, you, you know something, when I first heard that, I said to myself, wow, look at the kettle calling the pot <laughs> black. You understand what I'm saying? Because the same kind of thing I put out about what I know about him, now he's spilling the beans on somebody else because I guess he figured now, you're up in age, you ain't got a damn thing to lose, you got projects in front of you, so you're just going to go all out now and just tell it. Well, there's some things we got to take to the grave, man. You understand what I'm saying? Although there's some certain things I know about certain people in the industry, um, that you will never hear them coming off my lips, man. You understand what I'm saying? Um, I, I hold dear the sanctity of some people's legacy, man, and I'm just not, I'm not going to do that to them. Plain and simple. Everything is not for everybody to know. Everything is not for everything to tell, Brother Rich. Mm-hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Because if you know all of that, you're talking about men that can't even defend themselves because they did. Number right. one. Number two, how you know all of this? Where was you? What were you doing? I just said to myself, that, that's bad. That's, that's, that's not good. That's not good at all. I don't know if dude was drinking. I don't know if he was just doing it. For, for what, what, like, what are you doing it for? What's the reason? What could you possibly benefit from putting that kind of information out there? Although aspects of what he was saying was already out there. But it goes to show and prove that Professor Grip was right. It goes, mm-hmm. it goes to show and prove that Monique was right. It goes to show and prove that Cat Williams and a few other people that stepped up to the plate was absolutely correct about what's going on in the music industry, what's going on in the entertainment industry, what's going on now in comedy and in R&B and in the entertainment industry, period. But I was just shocked and surprised that Quincy Jones would do an interview like that. Not, 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 his, not what he was saying, not necessarily how he was saying it. 
I'm like, but damn, Quincy Jones, I mean, come on, bro, you're going to say all that but not implicate yourself? Because, you understand what I'm saying? Because mm-hmm. you was chasing little young men <laughs> yourself. You understand what I'm saying? You was mm-hmm. in the mix yourself. Like Bill Cosby said, all of them were doing that better at that time. They got drugs and cocaine and quay news and all this other kind of stuff, um, bagging models and uh, movie stars and this kind of thing. And it wasn't unheard of for those men at that time to be bisexual. So it's like, come on, man. Come on. To say that about Michael Jackson? Nah, man. I can see all of us, including you, Brother Rich, as a music producer, borrow from other people's music. Am I mm-hmm. right or wrong? Other people mm-hmm. inspire you. Uh, I try not to uh, listen to other people's music before I go to the studio because it has a deep impact and effect on the kind of music you're doing, right or wrong. Mm-hmm. So it's like, come on, come on, Quincy Jones. Stop that, man. Now, do we got to go over the body of your work and see who you borrowed from? All the jazz artists that you borrowed some stuff from? We won't call you a thief. We'll just say John Coltrane inspired you. Miles Davis inspired you. Cap Calloway inspired you. These other people inspired you. We won't call you a thief. So come on, man. I took some of that personal, man, especially about Marvin Gaye and Michael Jackson. You understand what I'm saying? Richard Pryor, I can see. He admitted some shit. Mm-hmm. You understand what I'm saying? But come on, man. Sad but, sad but true, you said that about Michael, but you produced them. Mm. So it's like, come on, man. We know it went down with you, LL, you and Queen Latifah, you and Kevin Campbell. You know what kind of thing you were running, man. So cut that out, man. Stop the bullshit, man. For real. Do you um when you when you hear Quincy Jones say this? Do you is is it? What do you think about those who who say he might he's keeping it real by saying this? He's you know he's keeping it real. Do you see any sense of he's keeping it real in what in some of Qu- uh, Quincy Jones' statements? Yeah, we updated that slang term, brother Rich. We keeping it a buck. We keeping it one hundred. Then if you gonna keep it one hundred, then tell the whole damn truth. Mm-hmm. What was your involvement? What mailboxes are you fucking? You understand what I'm saying? Right, right, right. Don't put it up on Marlon Brando. We already know that. How they get down like that. But let's just be up front and let's be real and be honest. And we're going to keep it a buck. So you keeping it real, come on, man. Yeah, you keeping it You keeping it uh, halfway real. <laughs> nah. Come on, man. Plain simple. See, but that conversation, it led me to what speech was saying about the picture with T.I. and Jay-Z and the rest of them in that picture. It led me to what Raven Simone was saying. Because there's a certain kind of, I said it before, Brother Rich, they got a $20 million club that a lot of us are not privy to. We're not, we not up in that space like that. We don't know what's going on with some cats like that. You understand what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. How in the hell? And I'm not, I'm not playing hating on Jay-Z and T.I. and the rest of them. Fuck you going to have a, a banquet, a little get-together. Ain't no women in the picture that's 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 popular, that's that um that's the most celebrated. However, the language they use, I'm like, we're sisters. You understand what I'm saying? We're the sisters that, that are the bosses. We're the sisters that have been doing the damn thing. So I'm like, come on, man, nah. So nah, well, wait, so you're basically saying you agree with what Raven Simone was saying about the picture with uh, Jay Z and them at the Rock Brunch, Rock Nation Brunch? I, a- I absolutely disagree with Raven Simone. I agree with what Speech was saying. Well, well, very- let, let me let me. Uh, well, Raven Simone posted what um what Speech was saying. Let me just read that real quick so the family won't get uh, confused as to what we're talking about. So Raven Simone shared uh, Speech post on her page. And um, they criticized her for for sharing. So she agree, she agrees with speech post, and I guess you agree with speech post. So all of y'all uh-huh. agree with each other. So let me read it. A group of so-called successful black men, uh, minus Khalid racially, I guess they're talking about DJ Khalid, who became rich and famous from per- perpetuating the worst black stereotypes to the ears and eyes of the whole planet, like drug dealing, pimping, murdering other black men, and disrespected black woman, I know, making observations is being a hater. 
The uh and they put this up because they were they were saying um originally they had this picture they were saying black excellence. So I guess speech and Raven Simone said, How is this black excellence if these guys were perpetuating the worst stereotypes on the planet about black men and black women? So, with that being said, uh so you do agree with that? I do agree with that, but A, who says who calls it black excellence? That's number one. How do you measure black excellence? Can you honestly say that about the local drug dealer that's up in Harlem right now? That but because he has a bin, uh, a couple of houses, he got real estate now and other things, that he, it's, it's, it's black excellence? Can, can we honestly say that? No. Can, okay, so I was in front of an audience this weekend. Um, I spoke for my sister. Shout out to Cookie. All right. Uh, Miss Bonner. In Philly. All right. So... I spoke at, uh, at Lincoln, at the downtown campus, and I put it before the audience. I said, I'm not being a player hater. I'm just saying to you, out of the men that you see on this picture, all right, let's weigh the damage that they've done to the black community. And if we can etch out three good songs, three positive songs that uplifted us so we can balance this thing out, please talk to me. Audience was quiet. One woman yelled out way from the back, said 444. I said, okay, granted. Next, I said, let's 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 stop, let's stop the bullshit and stop pretending like what speech from Arrested Development said was absolutely wrong. Y'all may look at it like he's hating, but he's not. That's his observation. These men are perpetuating pimping, hustling, brawling, murdering, and a whole bunch of other stereotypical bullshit that they would expect from cats like that in the music industry. I'm saying, I'm saying, where's the balance from those artists, man? But now that they've became rich and famous for that kind of music, I'm saying to you, where's the balance? You got damn right he should be putting out 444 to balance out all that other bullshit. And this is not playing hate, this is just being very real and very upfront and very transparent. It's not playing hate. Anybody would tell you when T.I. was coming up, I was a T.I. fan. I'm like, yo, that dude got some guts. That dude is real. That dude is street. That's exactly what the ATL need right now. Yada, yada, yada. That was me about T.I. Recently, right with you, Brother Rich, on this interview, right here on the Underground Railroad, I said, Jay-Z is coming to base. Did I not? Yes. But I'm not going to let these brothers off the hook with the shit that they put out there. Me and Ludacris was cool. We had a conversation backstage one time, and we talked. But I'm not going for holes in every area code. I love Kendrick Lamar, but I'm not fucking with no pussy and Patron. We got to call it like we see it, Brother Rich. And if we did this to get in the industry, to make our mark in the industry, so we can become rich and famous, then what is it all for, man? And all of us might as well make that kind of music and shit on the black community. So nah, man, I got to ride with speech. From development. His observation was 1,000% correct. So uh, let me read a quote to you that uh, T.I. posted in response to Raven's comments, and uh, I guess this is how uh, a lot of people feel. Every saint has a past, and every sinner has a future. That's a quote from Oscar Wilde, and um, a lot of I've seen uh, on, on, on the Internet, a lot of people even reference Malcolm X with his earlier pimp, pimping days. Uh, we're quick to forgive Malcolm for pimping. In fact, most of us don't even remember or don't want to remember that Malcolm was a pimp. But for some reason, we can't forgive uh, a person that's alive, their past, while they're still living. So do you see any comparison? Do you see anything wrong with, you know, always trying to dig up dirt of a person when, you know, they yeah, obviously no. have changed certain things about themselves? Uh, obviously, T.I. have changed. And T.I., you not Malcolm. So let's not make that comparison, first of all. Second of all, T.I. has changed. All of us can see that, the work that, the work, the work that he's doing. We don't want to remember your, your past, T.I. Most of us don't know the, the full extent of what you did in the past. You know what I'm saying? Malcolm X left his past behind him and became the man that we know him to be. you right, T.I. Everybody got a past. Professor Griff got a past. You may not know about it, but you can call me, 678-557-2919. I can meet you anywhere, fucking Starbucks, 
in the swaps, wherever. Don't make me look fucking different. We can sit down and have a conversation, and I'll let you on in on some things about my past. But I ain't never going back to that. And I'm balancing my past out with the good that I do now at 57 years old. You understand what I'm saying? Not to say that he's not doing that. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not saying that at all. But T.I., let's put things in context. Let's not continue to support people and ride with people that perpetuate that kind of madness, man. Perpetrated on the black community. When those particular things come up and represent the damage to black community, we have to begin a process of repairing the black community, repairing the hood. You understand what I'm saying? We got to repair it, man. Plain and simple. And I can honestly say, and I've said this many times, T.I. is doing that. Jay-Z is coming of age. I've said that. i said that, man. But, but, did, but, but check this. After they toasted it up, did they talk to the puppies of the world? Did they talk to the co- uh, college? Khaled, whatever you call itself? Did they talk to them young cats that are coming up? You understand what I'm saying? So now the test is, Brother Rich, let's see the new music that come out now. You understand what I'm saying? Let's, let's, we'll mm. see. That's the mm. test, man. It's not what we talk about today. It's what we do tomorrow, right or wrong. And I'm, as an older brother of T.I. and Jay-Z, I'm, I'm holding them to the yardstick that they measured for themselves. I didn't measure it out. They measured it out for themselves. Plain and simple. And as their brother, do I have not the right to pull their coat? Because I gave them the right to pull mine. Mm-hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. That's real, man. That, that's mm-hmm. just real. And like I said, my phone number's been out there. I don't mind talking to anybody at any given time, Brother Rich. There has to be a, 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 a level of respect. We have to have some values. We have to have some principles. All right? We have to have a code that we live by, man. Young people are watching our moves and the music that we make and who we align ourselves with. You understand what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. You make the 444 album at the same time you supporting Hillary, riding for Hillary. Come on, bro. Come on, man. Come on. You make now, some of the intricacies of the Clintons. I could school you, Jay-Z. I'm not being disrespectful, bro. I'm just saying if you don't know the intricacies of these people and other people that's moving behind the scenes, call your brother Professor Grip the Minister of Information. I got you, man. I got you all day long. Now, uh, do 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 you think it's the same as um as, as you know this is an art form. Music is an art form, just like uh, acting is an art form. And you know we have actors like Arnold Schwarzenegger who killed a lot of people in his movies, did a lot of committed a lot of violence in his movies. But in, when it was time to run for governor, people didn't look at his art form; they just looked at the words he was saying. So, do you think you should judge someone? Ba- Hello, you're like. Is I'm that here. you? I'm here. I'm here. That's not me. Oh. That's the love of people. Yeah, here's something. Um, yeah. Do you do you think we should judge somebody based on their art form? Because at the end of the day, it's entertainment. Like, would you judge Denzel based on Training Day when you know damn well it was just a movie? No, 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 no. But there's a thin line between art and reality. Is mm-hmm. art imitating reality or is reality imitating art? These are the same brothers that talk about keeping it a buck, keeping it 100, keeping it real. Right or wrong? Mm-hmm. I'm gonna pull a page from Hip Hop Decoded. Black Dot. Is it we keeping it R E A L or we keeping it R E E L? What's real nowadays to a young shorty that admires Jay Z and T I and the rest of these cats and Puffy and the rest of them, and they take this stuff literally. You understand what I'm saying? Knowing dang all well half the dads are missing out of the home. Knowing dang all well mom working two and a half three jobs. Knowing dang all well they don't have no role models. Uh, they know all these dynamics because they come from that. You understand what I'm saying? No, we're not going to judge Jay-Z from the 444 album. No. We're not going to judge T.I. on one or two songs that he may have put out, put out there about what he was doing in the street. We're not judging you from that. We're judging people on their conscious behavior. You understand what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. You are what you think you are, Brother Rich. What you think about most of the time, that's who and what you are. That's what you're going to call and speak into existence. And there's nothing wrong with that. 
You understand what I'm saying? The same people that will leave a comment under this YouTube clip are judging you and I like they claim that I'm judging and you're judging Jay-Z and T.I. You understand what I'm saying? No. It's about accountability, and that's what we're going to be about, accountability. That's the only way we're going to correct this situation, man. It's about accountability, Brother Rich. Plain mm -hmm. and simple. Plain and simple, man. Do you think in a situation in a situation like this, do you think, because um, I've, I've also heard people in the comment section saying that, um, you know, it, 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 it takes the responsibility off the parents too much when you blame actors, when you blame video games, when you blame Mortal Kombat or Street Fighter or Grand Theft Auto, when you blame the rappers, when you blame... Uh, LeBron James for being in a McDonald's commercial. Now your kid eat McDonald's, and now your kid health isn't good. Do you think it's too much finger pointing on the parents' behalf? Because if the parents were being parents, these actors and entertainment people would be just who they are, entertaining and not taking the role of a parent in the first place. I don't know how much entertaining that you're going to get, brother Rich, as somebody dressing up in a dress for a McDonald's commercial. That's not entertaining, brother Rich. And you're right. If the parents were doing the parenting that they should do, they would guard their children against such imagery as LeBron James dressing up in a skirt and a dress to do a McDonald's commercial. They would, they would guard their children from that. And you're right. We're putting too much and too much responsibility on some of the basketball, football players, entertainers, rappers, or whoever. Um, but when was the class being taught to teach some of these parents how to be parents for the rich? With that said, and with that known, all right, I'm extra mindful of what I say in the lyrics. I'm extra mindful of the imagery in the video. I'm extra mindful of what I have on stage that may influence young cats that call me every day. Say, damn, Professor Griff, man, I really admire you, man. I've been watching your stuff. Man, I was binging on Professor Griff's YouTube clips. You understand what I'm saying? Right then and there, in that conversation, I'm held responsible. Am I not? Mm hmm mm hmm Okay. So I'm not going to go in the studio now and, and, and put out and put out makeup songs and create songs and then do videos and, and create a stage show that's going to uh, contradict everything that I'm saying on the interviews with Brother Rich. Well, I have to be very mindful of that. And no one needs to hold me uh, 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 hold the, uh, the, the, the hammer or the pendulum over my head. You understand what I'm saying? This is something that I know I must do as a 57-year-old MC that's been in the rap game for a minute. The Jay-Z's of the world know better. The T.I.'s of the world know better. And maybe they can say, well, fuck you, Griff. We don't give a fuck. We make the music we want to make. Then by all means, be my guest. Then the people just have to deal with you however how the people deal with you. Plain and simple. Some people say, well, you're not afraid they may say something to you? I wish they would. What's wrong with having a conversation? I'm open for it. Mm -hmm. It's not a hostile thing. I'm, I'm not, I wouldn't be hostile. I, I'd be open for the conversation. But I'm, I'm held under a certain kind, of, um, um, certain kind of scrutiny like they are. Plain and simple. And there's nothing wrong with y'all toasting your success. All right? Well, let me ask you something, brother Rich. I'm going to ask you the question that I ask the people in Philly. Name me, name me three songs from any of the picture, people that you saw in the picture that can balance out the madness that they put out to that black community. You know, off the top of my head, I can't think of any uh, three songs. There, no, there's not three songs there. Come on, bro. They, some of, no, there's some three. of them they, songs, they, they, they this, keep it this, real, this, trust me. Yeah, you, can, you might say there's three songs. We'd have to dig and search. Right? Mm hmm But when you no, no, the, no, names, yeah, those, yeah. the names of those artists, you don't you don't you don't think positive stuff. No, no, not generally. People get no, excited, no. they want to yeah. take a picture and get their autograph. Oh, T I was at the mall today and he took a picture of me. As a matter of fact, was it a month and a half ago, I bumped into T I at the gathering spot. I was having a meeting. Cool dude. Nice, friendly, million-dollar smile, all that's cool, but come on, man, same with Ludacris. And I'm like, you know, when I see Ludacris, I'm like, 
successful movie actor, whatever. He has some decent songs. Uh, he keeps it keeps it turned up. But the thing that runs through my mind is holes in every area code. <laughs> How much damage did a song like that? Like some people say, okay, well, uh, Tyler Perry is successful. But when you think of Tyler Perry, you think of Madea. How much damage does that do to black men in the hood? Mm. So I'm like, okay, what do we have to pay now? And what are we going to pay as a, as a, uh, as a, uh, as a group of people to undo the damage that the songs and the lifestyle and the videos and the movies have done to young people? You know, it's actually, These are real uh, questions, man. You know, what, what, what's funny, I was just thinking about, you know, you said a question you asked uh, um, the people in the college and myself. Just off the top of my head, actually, the person that stands out the most out of everybody in the picture, when I think of, like, uh, some type of positivity, because um, you do have to search for it, so, um, is DJ Khaled, the, per, the one person that isn't black. <laughs> so that's the funny part. Like Khaled is Khaled is known for making them positive out anthems, like out here grinding or um 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 what's it called um the popular one. All I do is win or I'm the one. You know he try to make like them uh, uh, inspirational, motivational inspiration, type anthems right. or whatever. Yeah, right. so it's, it's funny that the one person that isn't black is the one that I could think of that makes the most type of uh, positive anthems <laughs> out there. I just thought of that that's kind of funny. But, uh, but let's, yeah, let's, man. Let's dissect, yeah. let's dissect racism, white supremacy. If DJ Khaled was with you and y'all was at a gig, y'all walked out of the back door, right, to get in your car, mm. you think if some white boys rolled up on you, cops even, they would think that he's something other than black? Mm. Good boy. No. No. So we keep mm. running around talking about he ain't black, he ain't this, that, and the other. Racism, white supremacy, don't give a fuck. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? He's a nigga. Mm. Mm-hmm. Plain and simple. I'm not calling him a nigga. I'm just saying that's the language of racism, white supremacy, and how they would view him. Mm-hmm. You make nigga music, you a nigga, you hang around with niggas, that's your spirit, that's your vibration. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, bro. Plain and simple. What does he call himself? Who, D, who, DJ Khaled? Yeah, what is the nationality? Uh, I don't, I, I've never heard him talk about it. I'm not, I'm not sure. I've never, uh, yeah, I've never heard him talk about it. Yeah, so I'm, I'm, so I'm not sure. So how do you him to something else when we don't even know? <laughs> I'm, not, I'm, not coming down, I'm not coming down on him. You understand mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Cool mm-hmm. that he's successful at, 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 at what he does. You understand what I'm saying? But I'm just saying mm-hmm. how racism and white supremacy may view him. I'm just mm-hmm. saying to Jay-Z and T.I., Puffy and the rest of them, the white racist um, banksters, lawyers, accountants, thieves, culture bandits that have taken hip-hop and taken rap music, they have perpetuated the whole and boosted up and supported the negative, stereotypical bullshit that some of these rappers put out there. Thus Mm -hmm. making them rich. Thus making them uh, um, famous in the eyes of the average young person that resonates and listens to rap music. Am I right or wrong? Indeed. With that comes a responsibility. For all of us, not only those brothers, even the ones that are coming up like Kendrick Lamar, Chance the Rapper, Lupe Fiasco, and some of the other ones. You understand what I'm saying? Even some of the mumble rappers, there's a, a, there's a duty and responsibility, and we're not letting you off the hook calling yourself a, a rock star. We're not letting you off the hook, but because you think calling yourself a homosexual, doing some of the things that you do, is going to get you a pass because your open enemy is paying you money to disrespect black people. We're not going for that shit. They may say, God damn, Griff, so you want us all listening to... To, uh, public enemy songs or Karis one songs or whatever, you know, <laughs> we can tell our story the way we see it. But you got to understand your open enemy is going to gonna push those songs that they're going to use to keep black people behind bars, to keep black people dumbed down, to keep black people poor, especially young black people. Plain and simple, this is real. They're going to constantly perpetuate the, the negative stereotypical shit 
that that uh, young um, non-conscious artists are doing. Now that these uh, these artists have come of age, Ti's and Jay Z's and the puppies and the rest of them, all right, then we're gonna hold you accountable. Some of them may hear them and be like, "Oh, come on, Professor Chris, fuck out of here." Mm-hmm. So we, Public Enemy has never stepped to the plate and said, we sold this many. We've done that. We didn't. No, it's always been about raising the consciousness level of our people. Plain mm-hmm. and simple. Whether we sold two million or two copies, it's not about how much you sell. It's not about the money. Jay-Z said that recently. It's not about money at the end of the day. Money ain't going to buy you happiness. I'm just saying to Jay-Z, and I'm appealing to them brothers that were in that picture, man. Come on, man. Let's get together and, and, and build and support some programs that are in the youth centers. All right? Let's go back. Let's go back to the same youth center that you didn't go to to have a summer league program for football. All right? Let's take up what Snoop and, and Master P are doing with having football and basketball teams and, and clubs and, and getting uniforms and help guiding these young people. All right? Um, let's go to some, the, some teacher training programs with Chico Core, Khalid El Akim, and some other people. So the teachers can, can get along with the parents so we can have a true parent teacher association so we can see young people um, through grade school to see them through high school to see them through college. All right? Let's do these things, man. Anyway, I'm sorry. Go on, man. I, I, I got, uh, you, you real passionate tonight, Professor Griffin. <laughs> you on fire. <laughs> <laughs> you real passionate tonight, man. But I got, I got one last question for you, Professor Griff. Um, is there anything wrong when we're talking about these rap artists? You know, we started out talking about Quincy. Um, is it, do you see anything wrong with an artist? Some, I, I hear you mention balance um, sometimes throughout the course of our interviews. Is there anything wrong with an artist, Professor Griff? Let's say, I, you know, I, I make uplifting songs for the black community, and I, and I talk about issues that, you know, you, you agree that the black community needs to hear. But I also make songs like Holes in Different Area Codes or How Do You Want It, like Tupac made, and he had Heather Hunter, a porn star, in the video. Is there anything wrong with doing both of that? If, I, if I'm about balance and those are different parts of my personality, is it a contradiction? Or is it just me showing a certain, a certain uh, 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 um, realness within myself to show, like, this is the complete me, not just, I'm not just giving you a piece of me. Is there anything wrong with that, artistically speaking, Professor Griff? I'd say artistically be an artist. And if you want to tell the wide range of subject matter, if you want to delve into the wide range of subject matter, then by all means be my guest. Be an artist, man. Public Enemy made a song called Sophisticated Bitch, Brother Rich. They may look at that and be like, see, y'all brothers was talking about fucking bitches and shit, yada, yada, yada. But we talked about America being a sophisticated bitch. <laughs> Allow me to be the artist that I am. And if I'm not the kind of artist that I'm running around with uh, the likes of Heather Hunter, although I know Heather Hunter, you understand what I'm saying? She's not necessarily a bad person. As a matter of fact, she's a very friendly, nice, smart, intelligent woman. You understand mm-hmm. what I'm saying? I'm just mm-hmm. saying to you, if, if, if Tupac offered that balance, then fine. But what happened? Where are those rappers that admired Tupac that came behind him to offer us the balance? Name me a few, Brother Rich. I'm saying the, the, uh, the concept of it gets lost, Brother Rich. It, it, especially when you turn over to our open enemy and they got to pick which song to do the video to and pick which song to do the, uh, to play on the air. A lot of that gets lost, Brother Rich, and that's just real, man. We have to take control of our music. We have to take control of the images that we want to put out there, that we want to support. We, want to, we need to take control of this because a young mom may have a baby, and that son may grow up to be a model and end up wearing the coolest monkey in the jungle hoodie. And the mom may think it's all right, Brother Rich. <laughs> Seeing the wrong side of that Tupac balance, am I right or wrong? Mm, right, right. And they may think it's all about getting the paycheck and surviving and quote unquote keeping it real. Please, no. That image was throughout the world, man. It was throughout the. Am I right or wrong? 
Yeah, and young yeah. and moms that look at their sons and like, okay, well, shit, for a paycheck, I put that hoodie on my son. Hell, they was paying me 10 stacks. It's going to pay my, my son's college tuition. It's going to help my son do X, Y, and Z. We have to decide mm-hmm. at that point, Brother Rich. Everything that glitter mm-hmm. ain't gold, man. Mm-hmm. And you got to understand, understand the damage that you're doing, not only to your son, but other young children. There's a few things, Brother Rich, that came across um, my radar, and they've offered me that I, I had to humbly reject and turn down. I'm like, nah, I'm good. Let me tell you something, man. The amount of, and you would be surprised, since me and Soleil got married, the amount of times they asked us to do reality shows and hinted about uh, doing this, that, on the other, on um, on BET or or, or um, Love and Hip Hop, this, that, and the other, or creating a new show and yada, yada, yada. So when we fired back and said, now nah, we had Brother Jamal Uno, the prophet from Boston, write something up for us and submit it to him that we wanted to do something positive. How black men and women can demonstrate black love, and this is how the, this is how what goes on in the home. You understand what I'm saying? On how me coming in as a stepdad and and Soleil coming in as a step step uh, stepmom to my children and vice versa. You understand what I'm saying? Nope, they rejected that shit. Mm. They rejected that hook, line, and sinker, man. They're like, nah, that's not what they're really looking for. I said, well, you ain't never going to get no ratchet shit out of me and so long. We don't conduct ourselves like that. Plain and simple. Mm-hmm. Plain and simple. Yeah. So I'm like, nah, it's all right. It, it's all right. Keep that. So they're making the offers. They throwing jazz. They see who they can break. They see who's yeah. going to take the money. Brother Rich. Mm-hmm. Nah, never me, man. Never me. If you find me on a reality show, it's something I'm controlling. Mm-hmm. It's imagery that we're putting out there. And it's going to be loving, it's going to be powerful, it's going to be black, and it's going to be real. I'm not saying there ain't going to be no drama. You understand what I'm saying? I'm just saying it's something that we're going to control. Plain and simple. Indeed. Indeed. Sam Cooke, Sammy Davis Jr., other people that control uh, Master P, that control their contract and control what they put out there. Plain and simple, man. Well, Professor Griff, man, I definitely enjoy, man, the passion you bring to the show, man, every week. I know the people are going to love this episode as usual. And I want you to let the people know what you got coming up, brother, and how they could get in contact with you. As always, Brother Rich, people can reach me at 678-557-2919. They can email me at seriousmindsinfo at gmail.com. Or they can check me out on, on social media, just Professor Griff on Instagram, Twitter, and face and Facebook. Um, shout out to the people from Experience. We had a meeting today. It's a live streaming network uh, platform that's gonna give me my own channel. Um, I'm creating um, I'm creating a channel that's actually gonna give the the, the brothers, the revolutionary brothers and sisters that 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 dare to be revolutionaries a voice, man, and a platform. Facebook got motherfuckers in, in Facebook prison and Facebook jail every week. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to the brothers from Experience. That's oh, Professor Griff on giving me my own channel. And I am going to um, promote the black-owned businesses. I am going to promote the black-owned films, the black-owned documentaries. I am going to promote the, um, the black-owned elders that have a body of work like Professor Simmons, Professor Small, Professor Jeffries. Um, Shashi McIntyre, um, the Dr. Ben work, the Ashwa Crazy work, the, uh, Anthony Browder work. You understand what I'm saying? We need an all black channel just like that. Someone that dares to be black. I'm that dude. I'm that dude on experience. You understand what I'm saying? Live streaming. Of course, mm-hmm. you gotta pay for it. it. It's a subscription. You gotta, you gotta fill out the paperwork and I wanna subscribe to Professor Griff's channel and make it happen. You understand what I'm saying? I want to have a mm-hmm. segment where it's just me and Brother Rich doing our thing, and we film this, and we get it up there. What's wrong with that, man? Mm-hmm. What's wrong with that passive income, Brother Rich? So when the money come in, I can say, yo, Brother Rich, I'm cutting you a check. Mm-hmm. Uh, you understand what I'm saying? They reduce you and I 
uh, down to us begging for money on Patreon and, and our GoFundMe's and that kind of thing. We're doing a service to the people, right or wrong. Mm-hmm. Indeed. A, ve- a very critical service that we've been doing for years, man. Yeah. So I'm proud to say thank you to the brothers and sisters and the people that stepped up to the plate for my GoFundMe, for my Oculus Inc. film. I reached the thousand dollar mark, brother Rich. Thank y'all, thank y'all, thank y'all, thank y'all, thank y'all. I took that goddamn thousand dollars and squeezed orange juice out of it, brother Rich. <laughs> <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? I got forty seven thousand dollars to go, but nonetheless, that's not going to deter me, brother Rich. Mm-hmm. Matter of fact, that's a test of my will mm-hmm. and my passion to get this done, man. Mm-hmm. How we know? Somebody might hear this and step up tomorrow and say, here's 47 stacks, man. Go, go yeah. do your work, brother. Go do your work, yeah. Griff. You understand what I'm saying? So you all can go to the GoFundMe, www.gofundme forward slash uh, Professor Griff Film Oculus Inc. All right? Professor Griff Film Oculus Inc. All right, just hit me up. My, my, my website is being revamped so I can take donations on there. Or just hit me up at 678 557 29 one nine, brother Rich. Shout out to Big at Decatur Boxing Gym, and shout out to uh, Jabs with Nabs in the lab. All right, we what we're doing, brother Rich, is a beautiful thing over there, man. We are taking young people off the street, and we we I, don't, I didn't want to mention this, man. It's just the work that that I'm a part of with, with Big and, and Nabs, taking young cats off the street, teaching them boxing. All right, so long as they come in and they do the community service and give back to the community. They got to have good grades. They got to come mm-hmm. clean up. All right? They got to be presentable. You understand? They got to know how to uh, have a bank account. They got to they gotta know how to fill out and uh, create a resume. So all of these things that they got to have before you come in the gym. This mm-hmm. is a real work, Jay-Z, T.I., and the rest of y'all. So if y'all want to come donate, call Professor Griff. My number is 678-557-2919. Once again... Uh, excuse me, hold on. Can y'all, excuse me, my man. Right there, tap Jay-Z on the shoulder. Give him my number. 678-557-2919. Tell him to call me so we can get these young cats off the street, man. You understand what I'm saying? One less dude on the street robbing people. One less dude on the street that we got to worry about in, in juvenile detention center. All right? Indeed, really indeed, appreciate man. you, brother. It's Shout out to my wife, Soleil, who supports me in everything that I do. Indeed. Shout out to Queen Soleil. Shout out Professor Griff, always coming through, dropping jewels, man. This is Brother Rich. Uh, make sure you show support to the Brother Professor Griff. Been doing the work for so, so long. Uh, thanks for tuning in. We signing out, family, and we're going to see you next week. Peace. Peace. You ain't never seen a man turn leg go with his hand. You ain't never seen a man get a queen wet with a glance. What a turn, why, whole wide world, mind in my mind. In and out of time, my light shine bright for the blind. Some by the way I do it. 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 So I'm gonna be a millionaire soon, but I already knew it. I'm a death of bullets fluid. All this winning therapeutic. Some by the way I do it. Some by the way I do it. They be trying to drain my energy up with the battery is not included. Women trying to be recruited. Let them do the then I pull it. What is cute that she fool it? Some by the way I do it. I remember playing ring around the rosy now. I I got a pocket full of OZs, water dollars, wallet full of old cheese. Got a Glock, a cock and pop a police. Block a block a block a boom, shock a lock a bottle, shot him while he rock a rosary. Got your mama watching out the nose, please. Sloppy toppy while I'm trying to go sleep. Some but the way I do it, I ball out like a nude is hooping.